heute war für uns jetzt hier Lafroig angesagt. Das ist natürlich eine Bombe. So, wir haben jetzt hier unser wunderschöne Sicht und natürlich, was nicht fehlen darf, ist dann ein Rundblick, wie es denn dort so aussieht. So, schau mal, Lafroig und da ist dann der Bucht. Und wir gehen dem Buch drüber und dann sehen wir dann da, wie das Wasser so glatt ist, wie verschiedene Fotos, wie Reparaturen. Ähm, das ist alles dann hier Baugerüst, also von vorne ist nichts und dann ähm, ist da wieder tatsächlich erfreut zu sehen. So, was ich cool fand bei diesem Fass jetzt hier mit dem aus dem Stein, hatte ich kaum am ähm, Fass übersehen beim ersten Mal. Und dann geht man natürlich zum Gift Shop rein. Da gibt es hier super schöne Sachen, die man da erwerben kann. Also Lafroig macht keine Probleme oder kein Hehl daraus, dass sich tatsächlich Merchandising, Merchandising, Merchandising da anbietet. So, da gibt es ähm, auch alles hier mit dem Stoff da von ähm, Lafroig. Es gibt hier auch die Jacken, die man da auch da kaufen kann, Regenjacke. Also es gibt auch ein kleines Museum, wo wir wenig Zeit verbracht hatten, es gibt auch hier Tassen und es gibt einen kleinen Lounge, da wo man tatsächlich auch Sachen kaufen kann. Also gleich kommt ein Bild, wo es dann diese, tatsächlich diese Bar gibt, wo man die verschiedenen Drams bekommen kann. Die Old and Rare waren 35 Pfund pro Ding, aber manches davon waren dann nicht mehr zu bekommen. Und jetzt merkt er, die Tours sind alle jetzt hier praktisch ausverkauft. So, bevor ich jetzt hier weitermache mit dem Video, ähm, unser Tourguide hat gesagt, sie möchte nicht auf den Videos zu sehen sein. Deshalb siehst du sie nicht. Allerdings, ihre Stimme hat sie kein Problem damit. Und deshalb werdet ihr immer wieder einfach mal erleben, ihre Stimme auf Englisch, aber nicht jetzt hier ihr Gesicht. So, um, that's really great because we've got um, a lot of things we've done this year. So you'll get to see a few things um, yeah. on, thank God. Um, so that would be great. Um, my name's Sarah. I'll be looking after you um, today. So what we'll do this morning, we'll take a nice hour around the site. Um, we'll take the time, you can see everything's happening. And then we'll finish up in the warehouse. Um, and they've got three wonderful cast places to take from. And then you'll also get to bottle your own um, to take away. And um, it's a very unique bottle. So I'll tell you about that um, when we get down um, to it. But um, with uh, the history of the story, there's so, so much. Um, we've gone through very long accommodations. So we started off in 1815 with the Johnsons, and then it got moved down to uh, Ian Hunter, and then it went down to Benton Williamson, uh, our first female distiller and owner of the Troik. So I will not stand here for 20 minutes to go through each generation. So if you want any history um, after, I have to do that um, for you. Okay, so we're very lucky to have the museum all about the people um, as well. So it's all the information. So, um, so here at the Troik, um, we do a very unique Yes. Spring bank. <laughs> that's the most that's the most popular one that's <laughs> seen. So yeah, that's the most popular one. Okay, obviously. Well. So um, this is a great process that we are able to show off in the Rayla. Uh, the more uh, our sisters and family and company who need to Tory and uh, also do them. Uh, they've got three floors, we've only got two. Because we can sell our um uh, our mop for the stairs into our shopping cart. So that's a great idea. So great when you do the Gary Foster at the same period of the turning of Ireland, we've got the electric turner um, going on as well. So it's a very traditional process that's just getting introduced back into the family. We really want to get back to that. So we used to be, there's only three of us, the more, ourselves, and the whole of the family. So um, it's worth the basis of the family. So we source our barley from the northeast coast of Scotland. We always want to get the best of barley to make our best of whiskey um, too. So um, we, so we buy in 85% um, from Ellen Malton and we malt 15% of our own barley on the site. So it 
content of a four to five part tournament in Japan, and they mix in the colors and they have a smooth thing to the part of the So, when it commenced in Hakute, is a sequence. So, there's four like sequences here. There were six up, but we put a few doors in there. A couple go up. And six, a seven from Tari will hold that, and then that will be used for that gray rubber. And that will soak for three weeks. So, we'll soak it, drain it, soak it again, drain it, and soak it, drain it. So, we'll do that for three times. What we're doing with Tari, what we're doing at Tari, is giving that just that energy for it to lie on the floor for that seven days. So you can see just now this has been about three, four, five days in. It's looking good. We've got the start, we've got the shoots um, here. So that's a good floor. The guys have done a good job. <laughs> we've got a great um we've got a great modeling team here too. They're absolutely fantastic at what they do. So once that three days is done, <laughs> um, and it's like crisp, so this is it drying as well. So. 
it's absolutely wonderful. So, what will happen is the guys will um, have a machine in here and it will spread the barley right out so you can actually see visually how high. So this is 7 tonnes that can hold kelp. So 70, 17 feet under is our fires. So what we do here is like a, it's like a cold smoke. So what we want is no heat hitting this barley because we'll burn it out. We don't want that. We don't want that at all. So when the fires are actually on, you can usually put your hand in to feel the smoke and like smell it. They always look at, give me a funny look of like, that's crazy wounds tell me to put um, my hand in the fire uh, too. But um, we do that for 12 hours and we want to hit that 55 parts per million um, at least. We don't get to that, it's absolutely fine. 50, 55, there's not really an exact number for it at all. The next 12 hours, what we'll do is dry it out. So you can actually feel when you go up to have a wee look in and get a grab. We use the heat uh, from the stalls, it's recycled. So that is a big radiator down the bottom and that'll just, dry, just flow hot air just to trap that moisture and that flavours in that we want to get from the peat. So it makes that really nice medicinal and uh, malty uh, flavours that we produce for the Freud too. But yeah, get yourselves some. So, so heat. Um, heat is not an official um, ingredient uh, to whiskey, but it's a lovely flavour um, too. Um, so we were very lucky enough ever to all the ingredients come from Isla itself. So uh, we, we, we uh, use hand cut peat and machine cut peat too, um, as much as trapping the moisture and flavour um, as well. So our peat banks are by the coastline, so that's good for us because if it's rural it's very difficult. We've got the heather, surrounding moss, we've got soil here and a wee bit of salt in there too. So obviously we're an island there by the seas. So when you come to Isla, we've got quite powerful whiskies, but very, very salt flavour within the drank too. Very, very significant. Um, so it comes out in that shape, probably bigger, um, just like big um, bricks basically. Uh, that's what we want. So we hand cut our peat about this kind of time of year. This is the perfect time. Uh, we collect around 200 to 250 tonnes to last us all year and then um, we cut it, let it break for three weeks and then we'll bring it over to the distillery. When we cut it, um, it'll be absolutely soaked. But what we want is that just the dampness. The more damp it is, the more smoke that you're going to get from it. That's what we want because that's going to give us the flavour. So um, this is not the best of image. <laughs> see how fast it is yourselves. But um, the peat banks are located uh, by the airport. Um, we used to have a big sign saying the Freud peat banks. But people actually found out um, and we were trying to go get our peat and they read the banks for the food things and thought, oh, the Freud, they, they use this. And we were like, take the sign down. So um, <laughs> you can find it yourselves. Because um, when you come from the ward for Ellen, all you see in that roadside is peat. So um, you can see why it's so bouncy on the road. That road can then be flattened because it's regenerating all the time underneath. That's why the road is so straight um, as well. So what we do is we take the top layer off here. Uh, we don't use it, but we will be using it soon. Uh, we're going through a heat restoration project to be more sustainable. We're trying to work hard to be sustainable. And we get this top layer as uh, best as possible, and then we do not as fancy bags like that, but we do try our hardest um, as well. Then, when it's best for three weeks, they'll bring them over. So, what we'll do with the peat ventilation project is actually put the top layer back in, and then it'll take that year to regenerate much better um, again. This will happen by about 20, 30, 40 um, years. So um, quite a long haul project um, away from us um, too. So the uh, guys will put the uh, fires on about 6 o'clock in the morning usually. Uh, that's when they start their shift. And then it's just like a normal fire, just peat 
that goes on it is a very slow burner. That's good for the 12 hours because the best job of cooking after it. So when you see when the fire's on, you can actually throw a bit of heat in, put your hand in, and the smoke will rise up into your barley to get the fire. So it's great that all the ingredients like that is something really good. Because if the told is not to use any more heat, that would be the end of the cold. So it's very hard for you to eat normal cold with heat because it's but you've got to bend the rules some way. You can't all pan feed it perfect and some of the old heat and all the so we're trying our hardest to get this to If you have any questions. About um, Prince Charles, um, just because it's a bit rude to miss out all the photos and not explain, you know. He has so, the same question as I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he came in 1994 for his first ever trip to Isla and also the Broig, obviously. Um, he, this is one of his favourite brands, I hope, still today it is. Uh, we got awarded the Royal Warrant, um, so we were doing all we must have been doing something right um, as well. And we love the traditional process that we were still keeping on for the um, hundreds of years, 200 years we've been here um, too. So um, he actually crashed his plane, his million, million pound plane here. So he was only meant to spend an hour, but he spent the whole day um, with the previous had some of the previous managers here and he got a really great tour um, about the place and met most of the staff. Um, I love this picture in the middle here with all the staff because only a very small handful are still here today so it's uh, um, absolutely fantastic. He also came up with the scheme of Friends of Detroit so he um, thought it's a great scheme for everyone to do. I'll tell you a wee bit about that uh, later on. This 1978 barrel, we saw what in Warehouse 1, it is empty because he auctioned it off for charities and for a few good numbers, I would hope so as well. So he didn't want it back, so we kept it. Um, in 2008, he came over because John Campbell was kind of becoming manager at that point. Um, two of our previous managers, they came and met him and met most of the staff here. And then 2015, huge year for us, it was a 200 year anniversary, um, so uh, we celebrated right in style, I wasn't here so I missed a few years back so I don't even know what happened, but the pairs on the field, that is plot number one, so that's him in the middle, we always encourage people to go to one try and meet him on a way from depending on what you think. Back in 
into your chicken like for all your balls. So it's like a very small caramel flavour and um, consistency as well. And that will come through with our pulverised rubber and um, water to cool down and enter one of the wok bags. Now the third bottle will go in, uh, that's not extracted enough sugars um, at all. That will go back into the heater water tank and be used for the flushed water the next run of the mat. So it's kind of like making three cups of tea and um, you're using the tea bag twice but not that third time because it's not got that crazy. So that's the best way to remember uh, mashing um, in a nutshell. <laughs> um, you still got that grit um, within the mantra and uh, that will then turn into draft. Uh, draft is kind of like a soluble and uh, there's no alcohol in it too. So what we do is uh, the lorries will park out here, there's a silo, that uh, will get you right into the back of the lorries uh, and we're a small island with a very small community so everybody does get on here, we're quite surprised right? so we've got a very good relationship with the farmers so that will then turn into cattle feet so every time you farm there's a sheep or a cow um, and some of that draft will go to the mainland for a um, long on that farmer, anyone that grows barley as well for us, eh, which is um, absolutely fantastic. We're about to do two or three mashes um, up to a date um, as well, so that's your chat. What we do here is, is kind of like making, we're kind of like making beer, but we're not adding the hops in, we will distill the liquid later on um, in the process. So each wash back is kind of starting, finishing, uh, in the middle, coming to an end, what you'll have that 55 hours is that wash. So it's about 8% of alcohol. So it's quite a strong, be quite a strong, strong beer um, as well. Have you ever tasted wash? Yes. Great. Um, no, I don't recommend. Don't recommend. Yeah. But so, yeah, I could sell it to you really, really well, but uh, it's disgusting, basically, in a nutshell. Um, so. It, we get a very kind of like cloudy, malty, fruity flavour for it, but that peatness and the peaty taste is still there um, as well right through the uh, process. We use steel um, just because it's much easier to maintain and clean for us. We did have the wooden washbacks back in the 1980s. Als wir oben denn da waren, bei neben dem Märzstand, haben wir gesehen, wie ein Cracker da fuhr vor. Und ich habe gedacht, oh guck mal, da wird auch jetzt hier diese Schlümpfe abgeholt. Und tatsächlich war das denn so. Mich hat das erstaunt, dass die äh, eine Frau ähm, die Trecker ähm, dorthin fuhr und einfach mal dort tatsächlich das einfach selbst, was mich erstaunt hat, war nicht, dass es eine Frau war, sondern sie ging selbst hoch. Und die hat selbst die Taste betätigt, damit dieses Zeug da rauskam. Schau mal, wie das dampft. Also sie hat ähm, einen Rinderbauernhof. Und diese Restprodukte kommt dann tatsächlich dann dahin. Der Pot Ale, der Rest, ähm, wird tatsächlich dort ähm, auf 1% runter distilliert. Und dann wird es ähm, bei Koile dort in den See abgelassen. Ob das so umweltfreundlich ist, lasse ich einfach mal im Raum stehen. Aber guck mal, wie das denn so ist. Cool fand ich das. Jetzt gehen wir zum Stillhouse. Uh, wash, that will enter one of these wash bills. So like you're saying, whatever it says in the content, that will boil up, then that will rise over and up to the line on the tip that contains it. So that's what your first bit of your decking is your low wind. So that will come out about 24% in that first save. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that low wind spit, then that will um, go down to the low winds and fade procedure tank and then get double distilled into your uh, spirit still um, you've got here. So there's three parts here. You've got your head, your heart and your tail. So your head is your four shot run. Three hours is about 45 minutes. Then you make the middle cut and then that will be your new make spirit coming through. So usually they'll not be doing it just that. Uh, they've got the gold bowls up the top and that's your new make spirit coming through um, there. So what we want to get to is about your 70% and um, then we'll make the cut. So that'll take uh, about five and a half hours. So once we've got that new make We'll put it into the intermediate spirit receiver tank just behind there. That'll be ready to go over to the filling store uh, and get put 
Ja, also diese Spirit House war schon cool und auch diesen Spirit Safe. Also es gab ein Spirit Safe nur für den Low Wines und es gab ein Spirit Safe nur für den High Wines, also um, Wash Still und Spirit Stills. Bis ich da war, hatte ich das nirgendwo bisher so gesehen. Das, was offen ist, ist natürlich Low Wines. Das, was jetzt hier geschlossen ist, ist denn da. Wir haben jetzt hier unsere sieben, also vier Spirit Stills, drei Wash Stills, was wir denn da haben. Also ähm, richtig alt, ich hätte gesagt, die sind oben ganz, ganz schmal, weiß ich nicht. Also dieses Bild hier hat mich am meisten irgendwie ähm, zum Denken gegeben. Äh, William Bessie, heißt sie, glaube ich, hat dann hier links dieses Pot still hingetan. Das ist ein, Wash still, ein Spirit Still, der fast doppelt so groß ist wie alle anderen dann da. Ähm, ja, okay, warum nicht? Ja, kann man so machen? Weiß ich nicht. So, hier haben wir natürlich unsere storage stellen mit dem Torf. Also ich habe gefragt, am Ende kann ich ein bisschen Torf haben. Ich habe gedacht, ein paar Gramm. Sie haben mir tatsächlich ein paar Kilo gegeben. Also schauen wir mal, was wir nach Deutschland mitbringen können. Und natürlich, wie ich sagte, auch schon der Freud versteht das hier mit Branding, nicht wahr? Sehr, sehr gut. Cool, cooles Marketing-Team. Wir sind darüber gegangen in eine ähm, Lagerhalle. Wir haben ein warehouse tasting gebucht. Und da war dann tatsächlich jedes Fass hat dahinter eine Flasche gehabt. Das waren nicht die Flaschen, die wir hier gemacht oder gekostet haben. Dennoch fand ich sie einfach schön, wie sie beleuchtet wurden, wie es gemacht wurde. Deshalb habe ich ein paar Fotos genommen, gemacht. Also, guck mal, 10 Felix. So, wir waren in dieser Lagerhalle. Das war hinter der Gitter, da kamen wir nicht rein, aber da hat man alles denn wunderbar gesehen. Hier sind die drei Fässer, mit denen wir zusammen wirklich gearbeitet haben. Eine könnt ihr genau lesen. Hier könnt ihr die Farben sehen. Wir haben bei Bourbon angefangen erst einmal. Da könnt ihr ein kleines bisschen mitlesen. Das ist eine, ja, Triple Mature. Fünf Jahre erst einmal in Bourbon. Und dann in Quarter Cast 2009. Es war... Ursprünglich gedacht als eine, der Nord, ein Triple Wood, aber gibt es nicht mehr. Und deshalb wurde es dann noch einmal zurückgetan ähm, seit 2010 in einen Bourbon Barrel, also eine 18 Jahre alte Lefroy. Nicht schlecht auch für den Anfang. Der zweite, den wir hier hatten, war tatsächlich jetzt hier unser ähm, Manzanilla Sherry, also Double Mature, zweifach. Das ist, ähm, was ich doof finde, ist denn das, ähm, auch Fast Nummer 3, genau wie unser nächstes Fast Nummer 3, naja. Ähm, vier Jahre Bourbon und dann äh, gab es dann hier elf Jahre lang praktisch danach, ähm, elf ist nicht richtig, ja, elf ähm, haben wir Vanzinilla Sherry aus dem Jahr 2011. 53,3 verstärker, yum, 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 yum. Und last but not least, das, was ich auch selbst persönlich abgefüllt habe, war einfach mal das Jahr 2005, 54,4%. Auch da wiederum Double Matured, 8 Jahre Bourbon und dann dort ähm, die restlichen 11 Jahre praktisch dann dort in einem Madeira Hogshead, auch aus 2013. Das war nicht schlecht. Also unser Warehouse Tasting war ganz gut, unser Guide war ganz gut. Es hat echt Spaß gemacht. Guck mal diese Farbe da an. Also sehr, sehr, sehr gut. So, wir dürfen selbst einfach mal damit auch denn unsere eigene Flasche, 250 Milliliter abfüllen. Lafroig ist eine Reise wert, sogar aus der Sicht eines Amerikaners. Bis dahin, Whisky Jason, bye bye.